talking. This conference will now be recorded. I was going to say, I'm going to stop talking just long enough for him to hit that button because when we're in GoToMeeting, it makes sure everybody knows that we start recording. Yeah, I, as soon as you said that as I was clicking on it, I was like, oops. <laughs> no, that's fine. Uh, I'm really, really excited that you all are able to join us today. And what I love is that, you know, for all the webinars and brainstorming sessions that I've held um, since moving into this position back in 2019, is that I'm still seeing new names and new faces popping up which is really exciting to me. Um, so for those who I haven't met, hello, my name is Casey Shiley. You've probably seen my name. Um, I'm the Florida Library Youth Program uh, Consultant, and I am incredibly excited to introduce our Florida rock star, Isabella Ramirez, who is just finishing up her year long term as our Southeast Regional National Student Poet. And so I'm gonna turn that over to um, Isabella, for just a quick reminder, um, this is going to be very interactive, and so you'll probably want to make sure that you have something to write on, um, something to write with nearby, and if you have your camera, please feel free to turn it on and use your microphone. Isabella does have a PowerPoint, as you can see. If you'd like to readjust your screen just a little, um, to make the cameras a little more visible, there is a thin white line going right across. So if you hover, you'll get an arrow that will kind of let you readjust the size. Um, that way you can see more cameras if you wish, or you can make that PowerPoint a little bit bigger. So Isabella, I'm turning it over to you and take it away. Hello, everyone. Um, Welcome to Where I'm From, a poetry workshop you can do with your library teams. My name is Isabella Ramirez, and I'm an 18-year-old poet from Lake Worth, Florida. Um, as Casey mentioned, I'm one of only five poets belonging to the 2020 class of National Student Poets, which is the highest honor for youth poetry in the nation. Um, I'm also the 2021 South Florida Youth Poet Laureate and the 2021 champion of the Louder Than a Bomb Florida, which is one of the largest slam poetry competitions in our state. Um, my work has been recognized nationally by the Young Arts Foundation and the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards and has been featured in publications such as Mass Poetry's The Hard Work of Hope and also the Alliance of Young Artists and Writers, The Best of Teen Writing 2020. Um, this fall, I will be attending Columbia University. I actually move in a week. So, um, but to learn more about me and my work, you can visit this link right here, which is linktr.ee slash Isabella S. Ramirez. So now that I've kind of introduced myself, I would love to actually have all of you introduce yourselves to me. So I would like you all to type in the chat your name, your hometown, and something that makes you feel nostalgic slash reminds you of your childhood. So here I have like my example. Um, I put that passion fruit juice um, reminds me of my childhood because it was actually something that I would drink with my family every dinner. So I want you all to kind of type that in the chat. And in a moment, I want to have a few people share what they put as what makes them feel nostalgic. Yeah, I'll just give you a few minutes to put that in the chat. Very interesting that I see uh, from these first three responses, a lot about flowers and smells. And um, I think that's very typical, especially if you're here from Florida. Decorating for Christmas. I love Isabella. Some Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Well, while, while they're typing, um, your PowerPoint is a little cut off um, when we're viewing. And so I was going to see if you may check, might be able to check your settings on your end and see if there's a way um, to fix hmm. that so that it's not getting cut off. Let's see. That's interesting. Okay. It is. It didn't do this when we practiced. <laughs> Yeah, and I see it. Maybe I can represent. Is that something I should try? Yeah. 
Let me just represent and see if that fixes anything. I still see it's cut off. Let's see. Uh, what next to present? You have a drop-down arrow. What options do you have in there? You see what I'm talking about? Hmm. I'm not sure. All right. Well, we'll keep moving forward, and um, we'll try to. If for some reason something gets caught, cut off that um, is really pertinent, we'll try to type it in the chat as well. Yes, okay, I apologize for that, but I would love to have, so I see a really some really nice answers, so I'd love to have a few of you share if you feel comfortable. So do we have a volunteer to go first about what makes them feel nostalgic? And don't be shy, this is, it's gonna be very interactive, very hands-on, and I promise I don't bite. I'm probably just as nervous as you, so. I'll go first. <laughs> um, so I put ice cream cones is what makes me nostalgic. And it's because my dad used to take us, it was like a special treat in the summer for him to take us and get ice cream cones. And just the smell of them brings that, like that, cake cone or whatever, the smell of it just brings back every summer of my childhood. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you for sharing. Sure. Would anybody else like to also share what they put? Um, I can share. Um, much of Lake County growing up was orange groves, and that was one of our favorite places to play, just grabbing the oranges off the tree, come home, hands all sticky, mom wants to kill you. But um, the smell of orange blossoms at a certain time of year was just wonderful and you could smell it everywhere and so every time I smell that I think of running around the orange groves. That's very nice. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, does anybody else like to share what they put as well? I see that there were two people that were from the same um, hometown I believe. All right, that's okay. If no one else would like to share, we can move on to the next slide. <laughs> but did you guys get a rival high school? So um, to kind of start this off for our workshop, I would like to start by reading Where I'm From by George Ella Leon, which is a really beautiful poem. And it's actually gonna kind of kickstart what we're going to be talking about today and what we're going to be writing about eventually. So um, I would actually like a volunteer to read this first stanza of this poem. I believe we also sent along a PDF for you all to follow along. So please pull that up if you have that nearby. Um, so yeah, so can I have a volunteer who would like to read this? this first stanza. I'll do it. <laughs> okay. I am from clothes pins, from Clorox and carbon tetrachloride. I am from the dirt under the back porch, black, glistening, it tasted like beets. I'm from the Forsythia bush, the Dutch elm, whose long gone limbs I remember as if they were my own. Thank you, and would you mind reading the second stanza as well? Sure. I'm from fudge and eyeglasses, from Imogene and Alifair. I'm from the know-it-alls and the pass-it-ons, from perk up and pipe down. I'm from he restoreth my soul, with a cotton ball lamb and 10 verses I can say myself. Thank you so much for reading. Um, I would also like a second volunteer um, to read the last two stanzas for me. I'll do it. I'm from Artemis and Billy's Branch. 
fried corn and strong coffee from the finger my grandfather lost to the auger, the eye my father shut to keep his sight. Yeah, and you can read this next stanza for me as well. Thank you. Under my bed was a dress box, spilling old pictures, a sift of lost faces to drift beneath my dreams. I am from those moments, snapped before I budded, leaf fall from the family tree. Thank you. Beautiful reading from both of my volunteers there. So now that we have read the poem together, and again, please reference the PDF that we have sent along, I would like to discuss this poem. Um, and I have it here on the left as well for reference on the slide. But, you know, of course, there are no right or wrong answers to when we're discussing poetry or kind of delving into art. But I want you all to think about what feeling this poem evokes for you? Maybe some lines that you resonate with, what you found interesting, um, and also the significance of the title. You know, George L. Leon chose to title this Where I'm From. And, you know, we see as she uses that kind of, um, that model throughout the poem, the I am from, I am from kind of thing. So I, I wanna kind of delve into this piece and discuss this and, you know, just what you guys took out, um, took away from this poem. Um, so, of course, I would like a few volunteers, uh, anyone would like to discuss um, what they thought about this piece um, and what spoke to them. Um, the parts that stood out for me, well, actually, um, something that, you know, reminds me of my own childhood, the he restored my soul and verses I can say myself. And, you know, vacation Bible school was a big part of growing up. And so the one the verses you learn when you're in vacation bible school you never forget um so yeah that one resonated with me and i think that any kind of um formative education where things are being recited a lot they always stick with you whether they cease to lose meaning or not they always stick with you well, yeah wonderful response i completely agree i um myself i think about some of the other stanzas and i think about um just this for me this poem gives me a very nostalgic feeling and kind of makes me reflect on my own childhood as well and how i can um you know see some of the the specific like she mentioned specific floral like i saw a lot of you were mentioning in your own um introductions and things like that that really you know bring me back to even my own childhood as well would anybody else also like to add on um and what resonated with them or you know what this poem makes you feel hi i uh i really liked the part about um the grandfather and the father they just presented such strong visuals of uh just parts of the family that were just little but really stuck in their mind i just i really like that part Yeah, I agree. I, I, I also with this comment, you know, it's so visceral. Um, it definitely gives that imagery. I um, I like the first stanza for me. I you know the I am from the dirt under the back porch. That reminds me of you know just have uh, growing up in uh, you know sort of the outdoorsy kind of you know not in a city, not the concrete jungle, but you know, a wooded area. And I had mentioned hiking in my, in the chat for the first thing that you asked us to do. And, and then of course they talk about, you know, the Dutch elm and all the, the trees and things like that. So uh, the, you know, where I'm from, I'd say very, uh, very natural and wooded area. And that resonated uh, a lot for me. <laughs> That's lovely to hear. Um, and I would love for others to add on as well of, you know, what are some parts, I, I, I see this as a common theme with some of the um, responses that we've been getting. What are some parts that might speak to your own childhood or might, you know, somewhat parallel uh, things that you might have experienced or things that you remember as imagery or whatever that may be? So, oh. um, I like how it says about, I'm from the Persithia bush. Um, I'm sorry, the line before that, it tasted like beets as a child. These are all like little details that you would notice as a child. Um, but as a kid, you probably taste taste the dirt 
and things like that for digging dirt because that's what for myself was lilacs and I remember gardening with my grandmother and she had lilac bushes and just that smell and the feel of the dirt. I used to make mud pies, not that I ever ate them, but it just, to me it speaks about how a child sees the world and all the little details that a child would notice. Yeah, absolutely. And I saw, I think someone else was also wanting to speak. Yeah, I was just going to say um, the first couple lines about the clothes pins and the sm like Clorox. Um, my mom had a clothesline hung up in the backyard and we would spend the afternoons like helping her hang laundry and then just lay in the grass and watch the sheets and stuff blow in the breeze. And it, it just evoked that whole memory from my childhood. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, are there others that would like to also share some more? I would also love to discuss some of the other questions that I have as well, you know, thinking about the title or, um, you know, what you found interesting, whether, you know, not just about the content, but perhaps um, the structure or how she also chose to kind of separate these lines on particular, you know, how she's decided to structure this piece. Um, I'd love to hear about your thoughts about that as well. Um, okay, you asked the question about um, the title where I'm from, as opposed to if it was called Who I Am, and all of these images and scents and, you know, remembered uh, things that were said to them. It, it's things that not necessarily make up who they are, but maybe helped form their own character, but they become something new out of those things that they experience. So I think if it was called who I am, then it becomes their identity rather than influencing their identity, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. That's kind of where I was going with with that question is I think that there's something about, you know, what George L. Leon does in the poem where she's, you know, reflecting on the past as a way of what has formed her, but also, you know, that childlike feel of the poem and that, um, you know, feeling of nostalgia in childhood is also the idea of becoming something new along with still being formed by this, but also kind of growing up and becoming something else or, you know, kind of that being part of you, but also something, it's not just who I am, but it's who I was and also, you know, how I've grown since then. Let's see in the chat, a sift of lost faces, another great string of words. I also love that play on words as well. Would anyone else um, who hasn't gotten the chance or would like to speak about favorite lines, something they found interesting, and as Casey said, if you don't feel necessarily comfortable unmuting, the chat is also open and I'm, I will feel free to read that aloud as well. So Elizabeth said, where I'm from, I would imagine would be an easier prompt than who I am for adolescents who haven't quite figured that out yet. That is also true. Um, I think that we're all always trying to figure out who we are as people. And I think where I'm from is also a much stronger starting off point. If nobody else has um, something to share, I'll move on to the next slide. I actually have a quick question. Um, the I'm from Artemis and Billy's branch. I, I, is the imagery there that they're a branch of a tree of parents? I, I didn't really get that line at all. I believe there she's like referencing a family tree. So, you know, those are probably family members. Um, same thing above where she says Imogene and Alifair. I believe those are also like family members' names. Um, so I think there she's referencing, I mean, we see a lot of imagery with nature and it believes, I think that she likes to use that perhaps in her poetry. So here, I think she's kind of connecting that nature to also the idea of a family tree. Yeah, so says someone in the chat said, because sif is a verb, normally it also conveys an action with minimal unpacking. It's very, um, I love that point. So that'll bring me to my next slide, which is my ultimate question, which is what does it mean to be from somewhere? Um, you know, and we've been talking a lot about this. We, we just talked about this poem and we've also, you know, even in the icebreaker that we did in the beginning where I asked you guys to kind of tell me a little bit about your childhood and where you were from, um, I would like to ask, is where you're from a physical place or is it a community? 
Is it your family, your friends, or your neighbors, all of the above? So I would love to hear from you all, you know, since I heard a lot of great answers during, you know, when you were all responding about what you were nostalgic about, I'd love to hear what do you think um, where I'm from means and what does it mean to you? Immediately we already have on all of the above. And of course, if anybody would like to unmute and talk about what they think, I see some great comments in the chat um, says, I think it also means, so Samantha said, I think it also means the era or time period. Um, we have another comment from Kimberly where it says, where we find the love that nurtures us to grow. Um, Deborah says that I agree, it can be interpreted in any of these ways. And then I also see Jessica said, a combination of those things. For me personally, my family, because physical places over time have meant less to me than the people I've spent time with. I think that's actually, that was a very beautiful comment. But if you would like to, if any of you would like to expand or you know, if you agree with any of these um, comments here in the chat, please feel free to unmute and um, talk about how you feel. I see Gloria says, where I'm from is all of the above. I am referring to my home country, the Philippines. It is all of the above, but more like family um, and all of the above. And I see, I see that thread here. A lot of people saying, you know, the time I, the people I spent time with or family or, you know, things like that. But I would love someone to, even if I could have one volunteer to share um, what their thoughts on, what does it mean to be from somewhere? And Sylvia said in the chat, for me, where I'm from is a physical place where I was born, my ancestry. Um, and I'm not sure who we have. Um, I know Winter Park. Um, you have a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I think they said it's complicated. Yeah, it is complicated. That's what we're trying to kind of delve into a little bit here. And, and you see that George Ella Leon has kind of even, even with her poem, she's probably only graced the surface of where she's from. But I still would love to hear, you know, what makes it's funny. It's funny that I'm um, logged on with the Winter Park <laughs> Library <laughs> login. <laughs> My name is Lisa, by the way, <laughs> and I'm going to try to change that. But um, Okay, so when you asked the question, I was thinking of something that it's a weird notion because there are places where I've been, I've never been before and I've, I've found myself in that place, like this lovely forest in the middle of, you know, Western Ireland. I've never been there before, but as soon as I was there, I'm like, this is home, this is where I'm from. And I don't know why I felt that way, what kind of connection that was, past life, maybe if you believe in that sort of thing. But so it's a very hard notion to sort of untangle. Absolutely. I mean, I see um, for myself, I would say also, I, I think it's kind of complicated. My, I was born here in the United States, but my parents are both Ecuadorian. So I have a lot of connection to Ecuador. I've only been twice. Um, meanwhile, my parents lived there the majority of their lives, but, you know, I have a connection there. And sometimes, like you were saying, we have connection to places that we've either not been very often or never been, or, you know, we find a strange connection. And, and those things can be also beautiful because I feel that not everything can be explained so concretely or so analytically. And that's why I think I resort to things like poetry or I go to things like art because they can explain things that, you know, we can't often find, you know, concrete words for or uh, reasons for. Sometimes it just is and it's um, its own kind of art. 
Oh, I see some. Okay, yeah, my parents are from Guayaquil, so I'd love to hear that. Would anybody else like to share um, any thoughts about this question um, before we move on? Whether in the chat or if you would like to unmute. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna move on. So for the next one, for the next slide, now we're going to, taking all that we've discussed, taking the poem that we've just read, you know, the questions that I've asked you guys to kind of consider, I would like you all to make a list of where you're from. You know, now, you know, as we've discussed, where you're from is, could be lots of different things and it could be something personal to you. And this may include physical places, foods, holidays, family sayings, stories from growing up, you know, family members or friends, neighbors, scenery, smells, sounds, etc. cetera. Um, it could be anything that you feel answers the question where I'm from. And that may take you in sorts of, all sorts of directions, but I want you guys to kind of feed into that and be okay with just writing down the first thing that comes to your head. So here I have my list, I kind of included Lake Worth, a physical place, but I also included lots of also untangible things. I mentioned things like first ever Thanksgivings because um, you know, for my family growing up in um, Ecuador, they didn't really celebrate Thanksgiving till, till they came here to the United States. So that was something that I was playing off of. Also, two generations of single mothers. Again, something that's not tangible, but you know, my mother, single mom, but also her mother was a single mom. So that's something that I also feel very connected to. And then I have also little details like overgrown house plants, just something you can find around my house um, and other things that I saw growing up or experienced. So I'm gonna give you all kind of five minutes, about five minutes to write your list. Again, just whatever comes to your mind immediately, don't stop you know, writing. This is actually gonna form the basis of a poem we're gonna write in a, in a few slides um, based off of George Ella Leone. So I really want you guys to take the time with this list and put as much as you can down possible. And think back to also that question that I asked at the very, very beginning. Um, think about what you wrote in the chat and you can also use that as a starting point to make your list. So I'm gonna give you all about five minutes starting now.
our five minutes are up. Is there anyone that would need about a minute or so more before we move on? Or is everyone pretty good with their list? If I could get like some sort of affirmation in the chat. Yes, thumbs up, I don't know. I don't even know if you can do emojis here. The smiley face works, that works. Can I get a few more smiley faces just confirming that you're good with your list and you're ready to move on? Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Okay, so now, now that you've written that list and that um, we have spent those five minutes, we're going to move on and we're gonna write a poem. And I know that sounds kind of overwhelming, but I promise it's gonna be okay. Um, this is gonna be, this is the most exciting part. So you've now created a list of all the things that you've thought of, of where you're from. Um, we've now discussed the poem, we've discussed also, you know, starting even from the very beginning introduction you all gave me. Um, we, we've been talking about nostalgia, childhood, where we're from and how that you know, forms us and how that also had formed George L. Leon and informed her um, poem. So I want you all to use the model that George L. Leon used and start your piece with I am from. Unless um, you feel inspired by something else, you might have wrote, like, written something down on your list and you're like, I want to write my poem just on this one thing I've written on my list and that's totally okay too. But as a pretty strong starting point as something um, to help guide you, you can also kind of reference George L. Leon's poem and use that I am from kind of model to start your piece. And again, like I tell this to any type of writer, I tell this to advanced writers, but also beginning writers, you know, try not to get too caught up in the idea of your poem being good or having beautiful figurative language. Um, you know, myself as a poet, I've struggled with this and I always, I'm like, oh, this line is not good enough or this is not, um, you know, this is not as beautiful as I want it to be. And I think that that kind of can impede in that artistic process. To me, I think art is um, explorative and it's also just, it should be fun. It should be something that you are kind of using as, as something to relax yourself and kind of express what you may not be able to express in other ways. So what I always do is I always write what comes first, no matter if it's good, bad, doesn't matter. Things are always starting off as a draft and they're always um, living. I think that poetry is living and it continues to grow beyond when you are writing it. So write what comes to you first and trust your gut. Again, that list is gonna be your best friend. Those are the things that you naturally wanted to write about where you're from. So use that to your advantage, use that in your poem. And then I honestly think that the metaphors will then naturally flow if you allow yourself to be in that space where you're just saying what is on your mind. Um, you'll find yourself kind of finding ways to explain things in metaphorical um, you know, language or in other types of figurative language. So I'm gonna give you all about 15 minutes to kind of form formulate a poem. Again, please reference that George L. Leon poem that you should have a PDF of and also use your list. And I'm always open here for questions. And I hope, um, yeah, if you have any questions, please ask me. And yeah, I'm going to give you some silent time to write that poem. And I'm really, really excited to see what you all come up with.
And then Isabella, you wanted to do a 10 minute warning, correct? Yes. Okay, and that is 10 minutes and then we'll do another one with five minutes remaining.
Got about five minutes left.
Okay, that is 15 minutes. All right. Is there anybody else that, you know, we have a few minutes. Is there anyone that would like just a few more minutes to finish something up or, um, you know, make any finishing touches? Or do we seem to be all, all good? Okay. I see some smiley faces. Awesome. So now we're going to move on because, you know, now that we have written those poems, I would, of course, love to hear some of the things that you were able to put together. I would love to hear about, you know, where you're from and some of your experiences. So I know, I know that this is, can be scary, be daunting, but we're all here to support you and we obviously understand in this experience together, you know, putting, you know, writing something in 15 minutes, I know is stressful. I've been to many workshops myself. So uh, I wanted to just make sure that you all feel comfortable and of course safe sharing. And if you don't, of course you don't have to, but I would love to hear um, some beautiful poems. So do we have a volunteer to pick up and go first? I'll do, I'll go first. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, so where I'm from. I am from small town Florida, from the woods and wild orange trees. I am from arrowheads and alligators who swim in Payne's Prairie. I'm from rain lilies and phlox and wild blackberries that tasted sweet when they are picked and eaten on the spot. I'm from warm Christmases. I'm also from England. I'm from my mother's home that she sailed away from. I'm from cool summers and endless cups of tea. I'm from green parks with deer roaming freely. I'm from London and planes and trains and palaces, museums, theaters and pubs. I'm from walking on eggshells around my quick tempered grandfather. That's why my mother escaped to Florida. I'm from both sides of the Atlantic, the old world and the new world. You're, you're muted. Thank you. <laughs> I apologize. That was absolutely beautiful. I wanted to say that was amazing. I loved how you connected, you know, your Florida to England, and um, that was just wonderful. Thank you so much for Thank sharing. <laughs> I would love to hear if we have another volunteer who would be willing to share. I can go. This sort of poured out. It, I wasn't even thinking about it, it just came out. Okay. <laughs> uh, I am from orange groves and riding bamboo, sweeping out the tree ring house with twig brooms. I am from Sunset Drive, peopled with the Avon lady calling, Jimmy the snake boy, and ZZ top vandals, whose spray painted road tag looks more like a poorly spelled directive to girls who can't ride the bikes past the property line. I am from David, spray snow carver and Adam's family buddy, who ducked out early, and Becky's four jobs and ber epic birthday parties. I am from Amy, Terry, and our cool ham shank code words, knock down drag outs, giant purple bruises, the precise shape of Amy's bite radius. I am small town, I am latch key, I am a follower of the quail family into the backyard bramble that scratches and beckons. Wow, another beautiful piece. I really love how detailed went into, especially when you were mentioning kind of the names and, you know, um, I love how I, I really felt that I was, you know, getting to know, um, like the people that you were mentioning or some of the things that you're mentioning because of how detailed you went. And I, I really thought that that was wonderful. Um, would anyone else like to also share their beautiful piece? I don't like to share. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Oh, okay. Is that okay? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, all right, I'll go ahead. I am from mountains, from rivers and lakes. I am from old cobbled streets and fresh tarry asphalt. I am from the shady trees blooming over the street, protecting me and my own. I am from $75 in my pocket, a four-family home, an uncle in each one. I'm from steaming kitchens and shared bedrooms, creaking stairs, and the smell of age. I let the words fall from my mouth, 
Yo soy de. I am from choosing the language that lets me be heard. I am from pennies on the floor. A gloria a Dios with each blessing. That's wow. all I got. <laughs> well, that was amazing. I love your intoning and of course English and Spanish. It's actually something I do in my own poems. And I think that there was one more person we'd like to share. We're running a little short on time, but I want to make sure that you have your chance. Okay, <laughs> it was mine. Um, I am from cold mornings, from warm drinks and heavy snow. I'm from the small yellow house with a big fireplace. I'm from the sizzle and crack, the hissing when snow melts from the chimney. I'm from summer evenings, from baseball games and ice cream cones. I'm from sorting lures and untangling lines, from fishing in a boat, just me and my dad. I'm from too many girls, from hand-me-downs and I want that from a secondhand bicycle, blue with a white banana seat. I'm from jumping off the stone wall. I am from the freedom, those tiny moments of power from the smell of mornings as I pedaled away. I love that last line especially, but really thank you so much such beautiful pieces that we heard. And I'm sure that there are plenty more um, in the participants, but sadly we do, uh, we are coming to an end. So, you know, of course, I would like to say thank you to everyone for actively participating in this workshop. It has been such a pleasure to get to know all of you and hear um, where you're from. Here are my contacts, my email, my link tree, YouTube and Instagram. Um, I'm actually this Friday releasing a small chat book of my published poetry, and I will soon have a link to, you know, purchase that book on my Instagram and also my link tree. So please check that out. And also, if you would are interested in, you know, reading more about my work or getting a few copies of that chat book um, for your library teens, I would love to set up any sort of, you know, if I could donate to a few of your libraries or, you know, wherever your work, I would love to set up something like that. So shoot me an email if you're interested in receiving a few copies um, and that would you know be greatly appreciated but thank you all so much and I hope you all have a wonderful day thank you everybody and thank you Isabella and just a reminder this has been recorded and I will be sending out a follow-up email that will have the PowerPoint the poem and the recording once that is all uploaded I'm also putting a link in the chat for our post webinar survey um, and I will also include that in the email so if you'll just take a few minutes um, let us know what you thought of today's webinar and what you'd like to see in the future and Isabella we wish you the best of luck starting college and um, you know, we know you're going to do amazing things. And so thank you for being a friend to us here at, at Library Development. And um, we're excited to see what you do in the future. Everybody enjoy the rest of your week. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone.